One of the really fun things to do is to create virtual machines. Well, okay, for a nerd like me it is, it's a lot of fun. You could really do some amazing stuff. Like for example, let's say you're a Windows person and you want to be able to try Linux. You want to try Ubuntu. Well, you could erase your Windows and put a copy of Ubuntu or you could run Ubuntu on a live CD, which is okay. Or you can create a virtual machine and have a full blown Ubuntu on your Windows machine without messing with any of your Windows stuff. There's one example of having a virtual machine. So anybody who wants to pass the A+, you're going to have to learn Linux, Windows people. So why not go ahead, download a copy of Oracle VirtualBox, it's free, and set yourself up a virtual machine for Ubuntu. In fact, we're going to do that as our first virtual machine, all right? Now again, there are other hypervisors out there. I have no problem with them. I just find this particular hypervisor, Oracle does a great job with it. So let us begin. It's easy to get a copy of VirtualBox. Just use your search tools and type in VirtualBox. And that will point you, I like to skip the ads. Here we go, Oracle VM VirtualBox right here. Talks about how great it is. Right over here is downloads. So what you wanna do is you wanna download the hypervisor for your platform. So notice that it works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It works on just about anything. So you can download the tool that you want. Now the only other thing that you need to be careful about, you're gonna go ahead and download and install this, but the other thing you're gonna to wanna to grab is this extension pack. The extension pack adds a lot of extra features to the base hypervisor. Little things like being able to access USB or to be able to, remember you're gonna be in a window, right? So if, what does the mouse do depending on where you're at? Little extra features like that are only available by installing this extension pack as well. So be sure and grab a copy of that while you're at it. By the way, when you install, if you forget to get this, it'll remind you and get it one for you. So go ahead and install it. It's pretty straightforward install. But once it's installed, well, you won't have all my virtual machines in here, but we're gonna go ahead and make our own. So let's go ahead and just click on new. Now this is actually fascinating. It's looking at the host operating system and guessing what I wanna do. But watch what happens if I type in Ubuntu. This is just a feature of Oracle. I think this is incredibly convenient. And what it needs to know is the type of operating system you're installing. Different operating systems have different resource requirements. They're gonna need different amounts of RAM, they're gonna need different amount of hard drive space, things like that. So what they're doing is they're trying to help you pre-sort out all the resource requirements for your particular virtual machine. Keep in mind, you can change this later. Pretty cool stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept these defaults. I'm gonna call this Ubuntu temp because I've already got one in there. And I can say where I wanna store it. I like to put all my stuff on a very special place over here on my D drive. I'm gonna put it over here. The reason I'm doing that is because when a virtual machine is turned off, it just manifests as this humongous file that can be gigabytes big. And it's usually a good idea to kind of separate all these virtual machine files onto a separate mass storage. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. Expert mode basically gets rid of this and you have to make all your own settings and it works out pretty good this way. So what it's saying is I need one megabyte of RAM. Now that's probably okay for a really base Ubuntu. Now it's a matter of just knowing your operating systems. So this computer in front of me right here has, I think, 32, yeah, there you go. I have 32 gigabytes of RAM. So I'm gonna allocate a little more RAM than the default. I'm gonna give it, let's kick it up to about three-ish. You notice I don't have to be exactly right. Remember that a virtual machine is allocating a little bit of your actual resources. Keep in mind that I'm running Windows on this thing and I've got other programs in the background and I'm running this hypervisor. They need some of that RAM. So you have to be really careful about this. When you're running virtual machines, the number one most important real estate is RAM. You will pack on as much RAM as you can into a physical system because that allows you to run more virtual machines. Get the idea? So we're gonna go with around three megabytes. I'm gonna hit next. Now it wants to create a virtual hard disk. This virtual hard disk is going to be actually the file. And we're gonna go ahead and create this. Now there are different types. So there are different brands 
For example, if I want to run things like Hyper-V or VMware, VDI is the default Oracle VirtualBox image, and we'll just go with that. The other nice part is, is this file going to be dynamically allocated or it's going to be fixed? So you'll notice I set my hard drive to be about 10 gigabytes. It's not really going to be 10 gigabytes because it's dynamically allocated. On the initial install, when I shut down the virtual machine, if this thing's even half a gigabyte, I'd be surprised. So dynamically allocating actually saves on hard drive space. The only downside to this is that a lot of times access can be slowed down because it literally has to expand or contract a file on the fly. So most of the time, dynamically allocated is just fine. So it wants to know the name of the actual file. And here's where I actually set the size itself. Again, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because I always like a little bit bigger. And I create it. So ta-da, I have now created a virtual machine. And we can actually look at all the different settings for this machine. So for example, the system itself, how much memory I have, I can set a boot order for all my virtual media. See, by, def by default, it gives me a floppy drive, not much use, but also gives me an optical drive, which I find pretty handy. It's going to set up my display. Notice on this system, I can have multiple monitors if I want. I can set up the video memory. So these things are pretty good at dealing with 3D acceleration and extra features like this. Now granted these virtual machines can do 3D, but I'm going to warn you right now, don't try to run some big high-end 3D game in a virtual machine. They try hard, but they're still not quite there yet. I can set up audio if I want. I can have virtualized serial ports, USB support, all kinds of fun stuff. So we're just going to hit OK for right now. And now I'm going to start it. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> what? Just because you've made a virtual machine, that doesn't mean you have an operating system. It doesn't magically make a copy of Ubuntu appear. You've got to go online, download a copy of Ubuntu, and install it. If you want to put Windows in here, you're going to have to get some Windows installation media. You're going to have to pay for it. Yeah, that's right. The virtual machine's free, but if it's a Windows operating system, you've got to pay for it still. And then you go ahead and set all this stuff up. Get that? Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to cancel this. And I get a no bootable device, so that's pretty standard. I'm going to close this. I'm just going to power off the virtual machine. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into settings, and I'm going to give it some boot media. So I'm going to go into storage, and by default, I get a SATA drive. There's my hard drive, and I get a virtual optical drive. So if I click on this, now I have to load a optical media into that. So if I click on this, first of all, it will actually read the media on my real optical drive. Do you see that? That's my iDrive. That's my real optical media. Or I can just choose an ISO. So I've got a bunch of ISOs laying around here. So here is an ISO that I've downloaded from Ubuntu right here. I'm going to open this. And it's now going to boot from this particular device. Now we've covered ISO in other episodes, but a lot of people are like, well, where, where did this magic ISO came from? Well, I went to the Ubuntu website and downloaded it. Let me show you how to grab one. So here I am on the Ubuntu site, and I'm just going to go on to download. And there's lots of different versions of Ubuntu. I'm going to go with the Ubuntu desktop. And basically, there's always two different versions. This is the long-term support LTS. And then this is the cutting edge version. I'm a big believer in the long-term support because they tend to be the most stable. Then Ubuntu wants you to donate money. And because I'm cheap, that's, don't worry about it. That's my contribution. But in the meantime, if you look here, it's actually downloading an ISO for me right now. I've got a pretty slow connection. That's going to take a little bit. So once you've downloaded the ISO, all you've got to do is in your virtual machine, take your virtual CD-ROM drive and just point to that ISO file. That's it. How easy is that? Okay, now that he's connected, let's go ahead and start him again. All 
Ah, this time it actually sees the Ubuntu installation media. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire Ubuntu installation process. I'll let you discover that for your own joy. The only other thing we need to deal with, and again, this is unique only to VirtualBox. Other hypervisors don't have this, but to install that extra CD with some of the extra chocolatey good features. Once we're all the way installed, all I need to do is come up to Devices, and I can insert the Guest Edition CD image. And it will go ahead and try to auto start. So I'm going to go ahead and let that run. Once this is done, you now have a virtual machine and it's ready to go. Now it's just time for me to play with Ubuntu and have a little fun.